Okay, and we're live. Welcome to the first official episode of Privacy Fridays and Fight Back Cybersecurity here at the Bounce Back Network. So magandang hapon po sa mga ka-bounce back at sa mga ka-nod pop natin dyan. Once again, I'm Sam Hakobay, one of the hosts of uh, this show. Let me bring to you, you know, my good friend. And of course, uh, Kuya Titus Manuel. Magandang hapon, Kuya Titus. Ang ganda naman ng bahay mo. Ay, salamat. Kanya-kanya. Hiniram ko yung... Kinuna ko ng picture ng kapitbahay namin tapos nilagay ko sa likod. Ayan. It came out right. So, magandang umaga, Sam, no? Buti na hindi oh. niya ako tinawag ng lolo. Kuya, isigurat. Good enough oh. for me. Magandang oh. gabi po. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat, wherever you are. Tama yan, no? Kasi, Titus, marami nanonood sa atin ngayon. Nasa ibang bansa, no? So, kaya... Talagang interested sila sa ating topic siguro ngayon, no? Cyber Security yeah, 101. Yeah, yeah. And we have a very, very great speaker today. Oh, Season oh, veteran. Na, alam mo, napakabait itong taong to, Titus. Uh, alam ba yan? Yep. Na? So, oh, sinabihan ko lang siya kaninang maga na magsasalita sa ngayon at pumayag siya agad. So, ganun siya kabait, di ba? <laughs> okay, tawagin na natin. Kaya hindi na yun. Oh, sige, oh, go in. Tawagin na natin para makakwentuhan din natin po. Ito, let's welcome to the Bounce Back Network for the first time and on our first official episode. Si Mr. Engels Antonio, kasi marami pong hat na wear But tonight po, uh, again, Engels is going to wear his uh, Head of Innovation hat. Let's use it conveners din ng NADPAP. So, welcome. Welcome to uh, Privacy Fridays, uh, Engels. Kumusta? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sam and Titus. Okay naman, okay. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. So, we, are yan, diba? so, we are all We are all right, Engels. So, alam mo, Titus, uh, pinaghandaan talaga ni Engels itong kanyang talk. Eh. Kasi nga, di ba, lalo na nga sa mga panahon na ito, no? na ang dami ng online oh. ng mga Pilipino. Di ba? So, almost 80% actually of the population are on social media. So, ang dami talagang nangyayaring kababalaghan online. Di ba? Uh, Titus, Engels, ano? So, yan, paki, ano, post naman dyan. Magandang hapon. Uh, sabihin nyo, Cyber Security 101 or 101. Okay. Dito si ko nasa nagtuturo ka, di ba? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin pag kami 101 na yan? Ano ba yung mga numero na yan? Parang course number yan eh. So, uh, normally uh, para para mas maganda, ginawa na lang 3 GT yung course, hindi na course 1. So, para mas madali tapos kung meron ka updates, 101, 102 pag mas ng kote, 121, 122. Oh, so, yung tama, parang naming conventional yan eh. So, that's how the school run it. Oh, akala ko station ng radio eh, di ba? So, parang may gusto ito. O, tamang-tama. Uy, alam nyo ito eh, kasi dalawa tong pro- uh, programa to, no? So, simula muna tayo kasi majority of the program will be about cybersecurity. Tingnan natin yung updates sa nung galing sa National Privacy Commission uh, for, you know, uh, early, uh, late last week saka this week. Ano? Isishare ko lang to. So, magandang malaman din ng mga kapwa natin, mga data protection officers, itong ma-announcement na to. Ito po, kinuha namin to sa Facebook uh, account ng National Privacy Commission. No? Meron silang announcement na ito pong announcement na to, they're extending the validity of all existing certificates of registration issued in 2019 and 2020 up to March 8, 2022. O, Titus, kasama tayo dito, di ba? Kailan ka ba na-issue ng ano mo? O, oh. So, buti naman, salamat NPC, ano? kasi ang hirap pag ano ngayon dahil nga, I think, hindi pa yata nag-activate yung kanilang online registration system. Ano? So, kaya, right, ano, right. Ano, yapos po yung mga bago, sinabi niya sa announcement na, yun nga, sorry, nakatingin ako sa nasan dito yung screen ko eh, okay? For registration of new PICs, yun, personal information controllers, saka PIPs, uh, personal information processors, yan, you can submit uh, it by emailing dpo registration at privacy.gov.ph. Yan, hindi na po kayo kailangan magpuntang personal sa PICC, ano? So, lalo na, siyempre, kung ta- taga malayo kayong lugar, di ba, DPO kayo doon, bago lang kayong appoint. By the way, yung mga bagong appointed na uh, data protection officers, congratulations, ano? So, yan, Titus, alam mo ba, nasa LinkedIn, may mga 700 open positions ngayon ng data protection officers. So, Ayo, oh, that is demand or so, so, oh. oh, a very hot item yan sa when it comes to the HR. Uh, the HR are struggling to be able to find a new person for the organization. Talaga Grabe, naman. Oh. So, I'm sure wala uh, kang na-receive na ano sa sa LinkedIn mo, no? Ah, dito sa Angels, di ba? Yung mga nag-invite sa inyo, no? Nagpapahanap na ano, actually mm. ginagawa kami recruiter ni Angels. So, nagpapahanap <laughs> sila. So, lumalabas para okay. head na meron kami. Okay. Sana may referral fee naman, di ba, pag gagaya no? Tingnan pa natin ibang announcement. Maraming updates sa si NPC. Tingnan pa natin. Ito, ang sinasabi yan. Ito na yung mag... Ito, ito, isa sa pinaka-hot topic pa rin, ano? 
Uh, the NPC is extending the submission of comments, suggestions, opinions, and other valuable inputs regarding the draft guidelines and administrative fines until 25th of June. Ayan. Naku, ito yung nakakatakot na paparating na, ano, di ba, na administrative fines. Eh, ano? Kasi pwede kang penalize, for example, for one infraction ng up to 5% of your gross revenue, no? Di ba? So, Masakit, no? Mm, tama, tama. Ito siguro, talakayin natin to, no? Let's invite someone from the NPC. Baka si, ano, si Dev Comdino. Siya kasi nakita kong nag-preside eh, during the Privacy Awareness Week uh, on the, ano, yung sa public hearing, ano, no, ginawa dun sa PAO uh, on, on, on the day one. Tapos, ito, pwede niyong ipadala ang comments at suggestions niyo sa legal.npc at privacy.gov.ph Ayan. O, dito sila, ano ba sa tingin mo yung dapat gawin? Dito, magbibigay ka ba ng input mo? Uh, most likely, that will be that will be carried through eh. Parang it's a universal mm -hmm. acceptance already siya. So, uh, mm -hmm. it's probably, probably the most, uh, parang lalo, leveling up yan eh. So, mm -hmm. uh, mahirap kasi kung fix fine siya tapos malaki yung organization, kaya. Maliit na organization, mm -hmm. di kaya. So, mm -hmm. ang ginawa nila para ni-level up, that's good. Kasi at least balance oh. na siya. Oh, kasi It's itong based fines, on their uh, gross oh. revenue. Correct, correct. In-explain nga ito yung attorney Kiko Acero, no, nung guest natin sa second episode, no, na this is the fines imposed by the NPC. Kiwalay pa ito doon sa penalties that will be imposed by the courts, di ba? So, yes. Ikaw, right. ikaw, uh, Engels, what do you think? That's Anong right. tingin mo dito? Oh, I think this is a very good uh, development. No? Kasi hindi siniseryoso eh. Alam nyo, marami mm. kaming organizations na naririnig. Para sa kanila, ano eh, hindi hindi talaga siya seryoso, wala pa silang DPO, no? Or some mm. organizations believe that the privacy statement protects them from the entire thing, no? Parang ganun. Mm. Mm. I'll be discussing more about that later. May, 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 ano ako, may fine ayan schedule na, ayan, ako ayan. nilalagay. <laughs> ayan na, ayan, tama yan. Yeah. Hindi ko nalagay yan dito, eh. May tip na si Engels. Correct, correct. Ako, may, meron akong pilo, pilosopong tanong. Meron akong pilosopong tanong dito, eh. Actually. Di ba, gross revenue mo, no? Nung, nung final mo na income tax, di ba? Ng company mo, correct? Oh, paano kung lugi ka? So, very good question. Very, very good question. <laughs> paano kung lugi, di ba? So, saan nila i-base yun? May lugi ka na nga, tapos ano, magsasara ka talaga, di ba? Or, baka yung, ano, yung, di ba, yung, when you, you, you multiply something by, ano, nagiging positive. Anyway, pilosopong tanong, pasensya na po kayo. It's a Friday. Happy Privacy Friday to everyone. <laughs> oh, hindi natin kasama ngayon yung si, ano, si, si Lito Averia sa si, ano, si Abit de la Cruz, ang ating mga co-host din. Uh, baka meron silang ano Friday dates ano uh, baka kasama nila si uh, si Arnie Barcelo na uh, ano meron actually may meeting si ano si Miss Arnie magandang hapon sa inyong tatlo no na mimis namin kay dito o oh, Angel oh. sabihin mo lang kung gusto maging Wednesday ng ano ah baka kaya lang baka magalit si ang asawa mo pagka palaging Friday nandito ka eh di ba so yan tingnan pa natin <laughs> ibang announcements ah tingnan pa natin okay ito to maganda rin to yan ah si Abet nandito ah dito na si Abet, ah. si Abet. ano ba Teka, ayun yes, pala yes. si Abit eh. Ako, si Abit ang ating local celebrity talaga. Ayun naman sa ilalim pala. Siyempre. Pasensya na kayo, Abit. Ha, kasi, o, oh, yung ating tech ngayon si Sean, nasira yung computer niya kanina. Magandang hapon, Abit! Magandang hapon po, barkadang Abit! Good, good afternoon oh. po, uh, Tito, ano ba yun? <laughs> Kuya tito, na, Tito pa. Kuya na, Tito pa. Kuya na, Tito pa. Mamaya subukan natin pumasok si Lita Abria. Hindi pa hindi ko pa nakita yung face. Abet, kumusta yung linggo mo? Ah, ah okay naman. Kung bagong medyo... paligo, kung ang kaliligo mo pa lang ah, bagong gel ba yan? <laughs> bagong ligo, bagong ligo. Baka maamoy ako sa ano natin, show natin eh. Ah, <laughs> baka kaya nag akala ko kasama mo si Arnie nag-absent. Ito ito ta si Mr. Lita Abria, tingnan natin sana ay, nako yung mga telco companies, bigyan nyo na po ng magandang koneksyon si ang ating kaibigan si Lito Abelia. Kasi po, po, palagi po siyang present sa show. Palagi po siyang present dito, di ba? Wala ni Lito. Pasok po, eh. nag-i-audience. Oh, nag okay. Pasok natin, tingnan natin, subukan natin. Na. Engels, para mag-greet mo rin si, yan. Si the Godfather Hilo, of Cybersecurity and the Philippines of Lito Abelia. Ayan. Oh, God, Godfather na. <laughs> ano ano Isang linggo sabi niyo grandfather <laughs> Asa niyo ang ahas mo na dilaw <laughs> oh, Masiga yung godfather nito eh May, may pagka alam mo yun Pagka godfather ka oh, Ano ba ang gusto mo? Godfather o grandfather? <laughs> ang naglilid ng godfather Nung dating ano <laughs> Dating <laughs> sa DSB <laughs> Ah o oh, sige oh, so, so, May patama ano ba, yun Gusto mo? Oh, so, daano ka na lang, the Papa Ball of ano, cybersecurity. Gusto mo uh, na lang. 
<laughs> Welcome doon sa ulit na Bria. Yeah, yeah. Ayos lang yan. Ng connection. Mas salamat naman po sa mga telco, telco companies natin. Oh, pinatay po lahat ni Lita Bria ang kanyang applications. Yo, oh, salamat sa kanyang ay niya. Dinaw niya para makuha niya lahat ng bandwidth. Oh, huwag mong gagalaw dito, dito baka mahangin. Baka oh, mausto. Baka mahangin, oh. <laughs> ito, ito, ano? oh, ito, pinag-uusapan namin yung mga updates ng NPC sa kanilang ano, ano, Facebook page. Ito, nakakatuwa tong update na to. Basahin natin, na The National Privacy Commission warns the public against organizations or persons claiming to be authorized by our agency to conduct compliance checks or privacy okay. assessments on our behalf in accordance with NPC Circular 18-02 Guidelines on Compliance. Hindi mo ka umiikot pala ngayon. Parang, ano to? Data privacy tokhang? Ganun ba yan? Hindi mo intimidation party, no? Hindi mo tapos yun, no? It's conducted by authorized NPC personnel only. Diba? As yet, our agency does not issue any certification or authorize any individual or organization to conduct such activities in accordance with the said circular. Yan. Persons or organizations performing functions exclusive to the mandate of NPC may be prosecuted under Article 177 of the Revised Penal Code. For yeah, let's well, let's be stado ka na. Paano yan? Oo. Oh. <laughs> Ay, mga nanonood ko, ano? Sayang yung plano. Sayang yung racket. Wala na yung racket. Wala na yung racket. Matagal pa naman pinlano yan. <laughs> Para sa inyo yata ito, ano, Godfather of Cybersecurity Lito Abria. Ha? Ikaw yata pinapatukuyan dito ni Chairman Manliboro. Ha? Ganun. Pero hindi man dito. Hmm. <laughs> Pero tama-tama, alam, oh, alam mo, ang ganda doing, ng timing ito ano, eh. Oh. We're, we're just Parating doing privacy ano, consulting. Eh. Yung pangangailangan pala. sa D- hindi, pangangailangan sa mga DPO, pwede naman nilang i-outsource sa atin eh. Yeah. Ah, 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 oh. You said the magic word, toilets. Okay. Correct. Oh. 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 Yung word na outsource, it rings the bell. Yung, kasi, yung posible, yung... hindi pwede i-outsource, pero yung hmm. task, yung trabaho pwede. Oh, Ayan, oh, yeah, no. oh, and you will get the credit with our effort. Mm. Oh, <laughs> tama yan. Oh. Nasa ko kami. Oh, ito warning kami makikiyala. Oh. <laughs> yung pinakabata sa kanin. Yung pinakamahal. Yung pinakabata yun ang pinakamahal, di ba? Kaya si Lito ang pinakamahal dito, ang consulting oh, fee. Uh, uh, Inaan niyo po yung aming mga experiences sa lalakpas na 200 years. What? Sis, sa akin po yung mga years. Barkada kami, Senator Lillian, dito, kayo diba? Magkasama pa kayo ng ano. Oh. Oh. Da, da, Baka may alamin natin yung email natin sa mga pangalan. Oh. Correct, correct. Oh. Ay, ito seryoso to. Ah. Again, pagka po meron nag-cyber or uh, cyber security or data privacy tukang sa inyo, sinabi ng tag-NPC sila, tawagan niyo po agad yung 8234-2228. Okay? Humingi po kayo na ID, kunan niyo po ng literato. Kasi po, sinabi nga ni NPC, wala silang, hindi nila ginagawa ito ngayon. Hirap, no? Di ba? Hindi pa sila bakunato. Mag, magpa-privacy to kang kana. Pero online, pwede nilang gawin yan, di ba? Abet. Ano? Yes, The NPC yes. Pero actually do privacy to kang kana. Correct. Yep. Nanotice ko, mas effective kung voice phishing, no? Parang, tama ka, parang yung tokhang before uh, hmm. and yung credit card scams, dadaanin ka kasi sa pagkatarante. Yan. Yeah. Correct. Ingat-ingat mm. 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 mo. Yes. Oh, oh. intimidation factor yan eh. So, may urgent. Oh. No. Malamang may script na rin itong mga to, no? Kasi alam nila pa para tinay administrative fines eh, no? Diba? Mm, sigurado. Oh. Oh. Sigurado okay, yan. Okay, yung voice is na makakoba, it will work eh. Oo. Oh. <laughs> yung mga kaibigan natin na nanonood ngayon, kung may kayo, kaya kayo kakilala na na data privacy tukhang na, yan, i- dali nyo naman dito para ma-warning nga natin yung mga ibang ano, no? iba kumpanya. Kasi nga, Ngayon talaga maraming magkukumahog na mag-comply kasi nga paparating na yung administrative fines eh, di ba? So, at the same time, talagang kailangan nilang gawin. Kasi nga kaya ang topic natin yung cybersecurity 1. Inuna natin yung sa data privacy 1. Kasi napakahalaga na potektahan nyo na ngayon yung mga information systems nyo na online, di ba? Okay, so yun po, napakaganda na itong ano. Uh, again, di po si uh, Lito Abiri yung umiikot, no? Kasi yan. Pero pa kasi yung tumatawag, no? <laughs> Pero pa, yeah, ito, uh, oh, ang ganda ng <laughs> ginagawa talaga ng ano. Oh, yeah, si Lito, uh, meron mo ng warning letter yan. Mas pulido yung trabaho ni Lito. Eh. May warning tama, letter tama. muna, tsaka siya tatawag. Tama, tama. Oh, oh, oh. Kung ba't ba, 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 ano, yung ano, warning letter mo, Alito? <laughs> hindi, letter of authority <laughs> lang ang pinapadala. <laughs> hello, ay, yan, tama yan. Oh. Uh, Tapos si NPC, hindi lang po sila puro assignment. Oo, oh, oo. Oh. 
Ito, tinan nyo itong dalawang ano na to. Again, they're also doing, siyempre, public awareness and education. Itong nasa kaliwa, huwag ibigyan ang data kung hindi naman pala kailangan. Ang ginawa pa example, false elect survey. Naku, election, malapit na, di ba? Marami nang umiigot ngayon sa mga barabarangay, di ba, sa palengke, yes. kinakuha. Sino ba sa inyo naka-experience yan? May, ah, ba't ikaw ba o si, ano, si Titos? Ikaw yata Titos, di ba, sa barangay nyo? Opo, oh. pumunta sa bahay, binibigay ako ng ticket. May rapol po ito. Pumil- ilagay nyo lang po yung mga pangalan DTS dyan. Kami na po bahala sa rapol nyo. Ay, naku. Narin niya sabi ko, ma'am, nabenta na yan before. Hanap ng mga kaibang scheme. Tumahimik. Ano yung premyo? Ano yung premyo daw? Ayaw sabihin. Surprise! Ay, sabihin. <laughs> <laughs> kung payong Ayaw pwede na surprise ako. Tag-ulan na eh. Okay naman yung payong eh, di ba? So, pero magalang oh, naman. Tama, magalang, tama. magalang naman. Oo. Oh. Magalang naman, magalang naman. Sana kinuha mo yung data capture form para meron kang proof. Ano ba yung data capture form niya? Papel ba o naka-tablet? Nakapapel, yung mga parang, parang small ticket na na ilalagay mo yung pangalan mo. And other details also. Beko, medyo comprehensive, pati person, mas, mas sensitive info. Kamuti na tinatanong yung pangalan ng grandmother ko. Wow. Hindi ko naman sabi, hindi na po buhay eh. So, mm, ako, sino social ba- engineer? Basta, okay lang yun, ano? basta may privacy, privacy notice sa likod. Oh, tama oh, yung ticket. Oh, no? yung, yung mga 8 pages of privacy notice. Nasa loob niya sa tabla ganun. Yung ticket ba talaga? Hindi, <laughs> saka kung magkala. Ano, 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 anong premyo? Anong premyo? Ha, baka naman, Ayaw, ano, data privacy. Eh. Sino ko ano data premyo? Data insurance, di ba? Oo. Oh, oh. Si Abit pala, ahente ng data privacy insurance yan na bumili kayo sa kanya. So... <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Post mo naman mamaya para, ano, ma-email ka nila. Oh, oh, basta Para pinupulutan niya si Lito. Namiss na kami si Lito. Alam mo, ang taga namin hinihintay yan, Engels, na tumino ang kanyang connection talaga. Diba? So, parang naging president niya si Lito. Eh. Oh, ito nasa kanan, basahin natin. Don't entrust your personal data to someone you can't identify. Ito mo. Ito yung mga question. Hi, please answer this unofficial survey regarding the graduates of blah, blah, blah University. Siya sure, pero si Lito nagpapasurve. Di po namin pwedeng sabihin eh. Pass, etc. So, yan, yeah, online, di ba? Yung maraming nagtatanong sa'yo sa social media na, ay, please fill this yes. up, etc. O, oh, huwag natin tanong yung speaker natin kasi itatakil niya ito. Anong dangers ng ganito? Okay, sinong, yan. Tito, Sabet, uh, Lito? Again, yan ha? Hindi mo kilala. Ah, dito sa barangay namin, pinakwit. Oh, hindi. Tsaka dito nga sa barangay namin, umiikot na. Pinaparehistro lahat ng residente. In the case of oh. yung vaccination monitoring, eh, feeling ko, mm. kagandito yung selection. Hmm. May tama din naman na... May tama din ba na kunin na information mo, di ba? Meron naman legitimate purpose, di ba, while they're doing it. Pero again, sila ba talaga authorized to present that in the interview? Oo, pero... Hindi, hindi. Pero meron tinatawag na function creep, eh. Di ba? Hmm. In other words, mm-hmm. i-disclose nila, alimbawa, katulad nga nito, pinag-re-register kami to monitor yung vaccination program, pero mm-hmm. at the later stage, baka gamitin sa ibang purpose. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Diba? Kasi hindi naman sinasabi paano i-dispose yung record eh. So, correct, walang gano'n eh. Oh, uh, so, it will be the remainder for, uh, for quite some time eh. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, they can be sold to other parties. Mm-hmm. Eh? Pero na rin, hindi you realize Do you realize that the collection of residence data per barangay is also in the local government code, which is mm-hmm. over 30 years old na? Ngayon lang nai-implement kasi uh, electronic, madali na kumulik ah, ng informasyon. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. So, so oh. pagbigyan nyo na kasi, eh, mga fans nyo lang yan. No? Mandating... <laughs> No. Pero yung problema ha, problema natin is the danger of function creep. Ah. Uh, sige sige. Babalikan natin yan mamaya no. Uh, dito. Ito wala pa tayo matapos sa mga usapan diyan. Oh, ito. Si si NPC pinromote niya sa kanyang Facebook page yung call ni PSA sa Philsys ano. So inidentify ni PSA yung mga areas na pwede na magkaroon ng ano ng uh, ng uh, online booking appointment yan sa Region 1. Region 2, 3, marami na rin mga cities, ano? No? Saka, you know, Region 3 yan, sa Nueva Ecija, Pampanga, Tarlac, Zambales. 
Yeah, tara, yeah. Region 4A, Region 5, Region 5. Yeah. So, uh, yung Philippine six, National seven, IT saka, Registration. Uh, oh, ito Philsys to, yo. Oh. So, sino ba sa inyo nag-register sa Philsys? <laughs> ako hindi ako pa. Ako nag-register na ako. Pero oh, kumusta uh, I don't know, maybe just functionality. So, hindi ba kung available na yung uh, online booking appointment since they already have our information? Hindi naman mm. mag-text na lang sila, di ba? <laughs> Right, right. So, sa mga naka-register. Nag-register na ako, yes. Pero wala daw available sa lugar ko. Ay, kwento mo na lang experience sa pagka nagkaroon ka na, di ba? Oo. And siyempre, yung na plan natin invitayin si Phil Sist dito sa, no, na sa ating show. Kasi nga, we'd like to know what's their plan in protecting the mother of all databases at parate. No? Ito pa, may isa pa. Yan. Ito yung importance. Ito, related din doon. No? So, the National Privacy Commission reiterates the importance of responsible disclosure of personal information of social amelioration program beneficiaries SAP again di ba ito isa sa mga programa ito yung pantawid ano di ba uh, uh, by the DLT uh, the NPC calls the attention of LGUs and government to safeguard their constituents personal information collected in the course of providing SAP financial assistance or SAP financial assistance di ba ang unang circular 2016 yung di ba yung compliance of government agencies on the DPA no so again inuulit naman dito Hindi ko alam kung may report ng NPC on the status of government agency compliance. So, I, I, I haven't seen it yet. Pakatanungin natin si I Doris haven't seen it yet too. Wala yan. Wala pa yan. Hmm. Na, naka-experience na ba kayo, Sam, na kumuha ng ayuda? Siguro hindi nyo nakasakailangan, no? <laughs> hindi, kasi sa, meron nagbabahay-bahay, <laughs> na which, which is good. Meron which talaga? is good. So, Ah, uh, paper mine ka ng papeles with papel with your personal information signed in. Ito mm-hmm. na yung pera. So I was just thinking no na on a human personal standpoint. And yan yung pera eh. <laughs> Ito oh, na yung ayun, ayun, sayo, ayun, 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 the data with the money. Si Hipper malalaman mo information na lang. Oo, oh, oh, kasi eh ano ah. Hindi mo nga hahanapan ng privacy notice eh. Pero oh. yun, uh, the, the weak link kasi is sometimes si privacy notice pero Kung electronic, mas madali i-track eh. Pero kung manual, anybody could photocopy. Kung sino man doon sa chain nung okay. naghawak ng papeles, right? Uh, that's, that's also possible gaps na, I guess, mahirap control eh. Probably the right term for it. Oh. Pero may value exchange na eh. Nagpalitan ng ano, di ba? I mean, kinuha mo na yung pera, binigyan mo na yung data mo. Right? So, yun, yeah, nagtaroon na ko na uh, meron kasi nabanggit na meron na post in the past na nilagay yung pinos sa newspaper, yung mga listahan ng taong tumanggap, yung mga families na kalagay doon, yung pangangpangalan tsaka magkano. So basically that was a violation already. Uh, Pinunano ng National Privacy Commission yun. After a while, tumahimik muna. But the thing is, you know, uh, nandun yun na yung data now is circulating. So it's there already in social media. So wala nang bawian yun eh. Uh, uh, pera ka na pala, bayaran ka na yung utang mo. Tama, oh, tama. Right. Ako, <laughs> hmm. ako palagi kung pagka nakita ko ng ganitong ano, uh, and it's a government agency, ano, tutumpukin mo yan eh. Uh, aakit yan, sino ba talagang owner nito? Who's the PIC? Who's the controller of this, ano, di ba? This uh, right. uh, SAP, ano? And then, uh, yung, right. unang tanong, siyempre, may DPO ba yan? Di ba? Yung, the basic, i- let them run through the five pillars, like PIA ba yan? PIA ba nila itong LGU, for example, di ba? Collect information. Meron ba silang data sharing agreements with the LGUs, mm-hmm. for example? Para yun, yun ang wala eh, di ba? Hindi ko actually nakikita pa yun sa, ano, sa NPC. That they'll be as diligent as they are with the private sector compared to the government peers. So, maganda siguro i-benchmark, di ba? Ano ba yung level of compliance ng government versus the private sector, di ba? Kasi dun sa, ano, dun sa fines eh, yung administrative fines, di na makasama ng government. Siguro. Di ba? Oh, oh. sige nga. Uh, okay, dapat, okay, siguro, okay, okay, dapat siguro, let's test the waters. Tingnan natin. Hmm. Oh, let's, let's test the waters. Siguro sa LGU natin, ano, ano, sumulat tayo, FOI. No? Kung nag-PIA hmm. na ba sila? Hmm. Diba? Okay, About yeah, this, okay, ano, yeah. itong mga data collection nila. Oh. Correct. Sige, sige. So, baka, oh. baka pwede natin i-test yung waters. Uh, oh, uh, ang yan, common uh, complaint talaga ba, mga barkada is yung mahigpit sa private sector pero sa government bahala na Diyos eh. So, uh, so ay, we have to be able to uh, mention that we balance things, no? Mas malaking uh, data ang kinukuha ng government sector kasi sa private yes, sector. Yes, that's 
So and also again, very loose ang ano ang pang ang, ang protection system nila. So uh, no one's even auditing. So we don't know what's uh, what ha- what's happening with the data in the public sector, no. So hopefully one of these days, maayos po yan. Yeah, we're praying for that one. Hopefully in time, maayos yan. But in the meantime, we're worried, no? Because uh, our data may be with someone else's pocket or computer. That can happen. Again, malapit na ang 2022, diba? So makaiba na. Yan, ito yung huling update dito sa NPC, no? Every week gagawin natin to. And then hopefully one of these days, maging guest natin, at Chairman Mon and the uh, two deputy commissioners dito. Pati yung mga, ano, yung mga... Siyempre, ang mga masisipag nating mga ano, colleagues sa National Privacy Commission. Yan. Uh, yan. Again, saludo po kami sa inyo actually. Thank And uh, you, despite the pandemic, tuloy-tuloy pa rin. No? But yun nga, okay. marami kaming tanong. Pasensya na kayo para kasi kaming media talaga dito. But ito na, hindi na natin papatagalin pa kasi naghihintay ang ating ano, panauhing pandangal. Ayan. So, tayong apat ay magpapahinga muna. Uh, pwede tayo mag-post ng link ano, dun sa sa ating uh, mga social media page para naman marami din makapanood nito not just sa live but pati sa replay again, i-welcome po natin again ang ating kaibigan si Engels Antonio okay, so, siya po ay uh, you know, head of innovation at NADMAP and one of our conveners Ayan, nagpa-unlock po siya ngayong araw para turuan tayo ng Cyber Security 101 so 101 minutes po siyang magpipresent kayo. Ganun ba yan? <laughs> <laughs> Hanggang mataliyaran po tayo dito. <laughs> oh, babalik po kaming apat para makipagpwentuhan sa presentation ni Engels. So Engels, kung godfather of cybersecurity dito, minong mo siya. Diba? Kasi godfather siya. So. <laughs> yeah, minong, malapit na magpasko. Minong. Malapit na magpasko daw dito. Oo. Oh, oh. Uh, sige, i-ano ka na yung slides mo and then uh, alis na kami isa-isa. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bangswak Network uh, friends and of course NADPA friends, let's welcome to the show our good friend, Angels Antonio. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so maraming salamat sa pag-imbita sa akin dito. Actually, I- I'm very excited, Sam, eh, Titus, kasi... Uh, ang goal pala natin dito is uh, a series, no? So, I'm very honored to take to tackle Cybersecurity 101. Hopefully, marami pang sumunod na sessions, no? As we help build our uh, viewers' uh, competencies, no? When it comes to data privacy and cybersecurity. Okay? So, yeah, let me just introduce myself very briefly. I'm Engels Antonio. And uh, I'm the head of innovation for NADPAP. So, kasama ko po uh, dito yung mga... Ano natin, mga, mga hosts po natin ano, ay uh, mga taga NADPAP din po. No? And I'm also a director uh, at the Blue Point Institute of Higher Technology Foundation. We celebrated our 22nd anniversary last week. So shout out po ako no, sa mga students namin na nanonood. Nat- nagtatrabaho na po sila ngayon sa Google, sa Oracle, Amazon, uh, at iba-iba pang mga industry leaders. No? So kumusta kayo dyan? And uh, we're all, I'm also serving uh, together with Sam and uh, Titus, no? And si Lito, sa Philippine National Police. I'm also helping the Philippine Army when it comes to their tech and cybersecurity. So let's uh, proceed with our very brief lecture, no? My goal is to give you a lay of the land, no? So to speak. Para nang sa ganun, pagdating ng mga susunod nating sessions, uh, meron medyo, ano na, meron na tayong magandang foundation, no? So let me begin with this quote from James Scott, who is a senior fellow at the Institute for Critical Infrastructure Technology. He says that we've gone from a planet ruled by natural geography to political geography to kinetically functional geography to a cyber geography that is ruled by ideological variation rather than politically constructed borders. So this is really very true, no? Talagang wala na pong border. Kaya napakalaki po ng battlefield natin pagdating po sa data protection at saka sa cyber security. Okay? Time was when all you had to do was protect yourself and your data uh, within your perimeter. No? So, nung unang panahon, no, and, and my, my, uh, my colleagues here will remember this, no? we are protecting our data on-site. Diba? So our perimeter is defined by our server room or our office or our unit or our department. No? And uh, it was easier to protect data during those days. But then the internet came and uh, our uh, perimeter suddenly changed. No? 
So nag-iba na po yung ating perimeter. From a fixed perimeter, the four corners of your organization, it now became an elastic perimeter. Dahil po ito sa internet, sa connectivity. Case in point, a lot of us were forced to work from home during the lockdown caused by the pandemic. And by working from home, the perimeter of an organization actually became very, very elastic. No? Where their work from home members are, there extends their perimeter. Paiba-iba. No? So habang lumalakad, habang lumilipat ng venue, connected ang kanilang mga remote workers, then technically the perimeter is stretching and condensing and changing and mutating endlessly. No? So yan na po ang ginagalawa nating mundo ngayon. But this is just uh, within our uh, circles no, of influence. But let's, let's look at the, the big picture. No? Let me show you this one. This is uh, one of the tools that we use in our trade. This is a real-time cybersecurity attack map. No? So we have been collaborating with different organizations. We have been sharing data with the goal of producing a real-time visualization of the uh, incidents no? occurring in almost real time. We, we, we want to call it real time. No? Konting -konti lang naman ang delay nito. Uh, what I'd like to emphasize here is the fact that if you look at the, the, the display, it will take home the concept, no? it will bring home the concept that we are really borderless, no? perimeterless. Attackers from one country are trying to hit another country. No? For example, right now, they're trying to hit Brazil from the U.S., no? and from Mexico, and from Canada, and from Netherlands, and from Germany. Okay? And you will also see from this map that countries are attacking locations within their countries. No? So there are internal and external wars being fought right now in cyberspace. Okay? Ang nakakatakot po dito, dahil tayo ay nakakonect dito sa napakalaking mundo na ito, then we are all potential targets. Okay? And so it's really very important to learn about cybersecurity. Now, let me show you some data that we have collected from various sources to give us the big picture of what cybersecurity is right now, no? 2021. This is as of June 2021. First, 95% of cybersecurity breaches are, owned, are caused by human error. And this is really something that we should drink in, you know? Most of the time, people think or they would like to believe that cybersecurity is all about tech. That's not true, no? Tech is just a component of the, enti of the entire cybersecurity spectrum. And yun nga po, pag mayroong kaming mga projects, no? When it comes to cybersecurity, if we have target organizations, the first thing we look at, the first vulnerabilities that we look at are the people. For us who work in the cybersecurity uh, domain, people are actually walking vulnerabilities. So this is really, really very important. And I remember Sam using the word hyper-focus. No? Whenever Sam uh, tries to encourage organizations to focus on data privacy and cybersecurity, he will always recommend to them to, to hyper-focus on people. And this is something that uh, relates to that. No? Since 95% of cybersecurity breaches are caused by human error, then organizations will actually benefit from hyper-focusing on their people. Okay? Now, more than 77% of the organizations in this study do not have any incident response plan. And that's very scary. It's just like having no fire drill or earthquake drill in place no? in your organization. Nakakatakot kasi kapag wala kang fire drill or earthquake drill, mas maraming casualties kung nagkaroon na ng totoong sunog or lindol. This is the same with cybersecurity and the uh, data privacy uh, breaches, no? data breaches. If you do not have any incidence response plan, you will normally do a knee-jerk reaction in case of an exploit. No? So if your organization is compromised, if your unit is compromised, if your, if your office is compromised, you will do a knee-jerk reaction. Ano eh, parang feelings ang nauuna rather than logic, no? And so it's really important for an, an organization to have an incident response plan. Now, attackers know this. Attackers know that most organizations do not have any incident response plan. 
And therefore, they take advantage of this during their attack, no? Sinasabi nga nila, sa gitna ng kaguluhan, mahirap mag-isip. Okay? Next, the most expensive cyber, uh, component of a cyber attack is information loss at $5.9 million. And this data is June 2021, ano? Ang dami pong nawawala in terms of uh, money, no? Meron po kasing cost ang cyber attack. I will talk more about that later. But for now, suffice it to say that you will have to pony up whenever you are compromised, no? Marami pong, uh, ano dyan, marami pong associated na gastos, no? We'll talk more about that later. And uh, since the pandemic began, the FBI reported a 300 increase in reported cyber crimes, no? 300% increase. Now, pause muna tayo. 300% increase in reported cyber crimes, no? During the pandemic. What about unreported cyber crimes? There are a lot of companies who value their reputation so much that they will not report cyber crimes. They will not report data breaches. They will try to cover things up, no? In the name of uh, uh, their uh, uh, reputation, no? So 300% increase in reported cyber crimes plus, let's be very uh, conservative, 600% increase in unreported cyber crimes. That's a lot, no? Imagine an attacker behind each of these. Napakarami pong kalaban. Okay? Now, let me talk about two types of uh, issues that we have to be wary of. The first one is infiltration. Infiltration is about uh, attackers gaining access to your system or network. No? So, uh, by the way, when we, I, I, I might be using uh, the term attacker or bad actor inter interchangeably. Pareho lang naman po ibig sabihin. Yun, yun yung kalaban natin, ano? So let's talk about infiltration and the data that we have on infiltration so far. Okay? 94% of malware is delivered via email. And this is really very scary because email is still the number one, the primary official means of communication for organizations. No? Especially when communicating with other organizations. Okay? So an organization may have an internal communication system but they will most likely use email to communicate outside the organization with their partners, customers, stakeholders, and so on and so forth. So we found out that 90%, 90 of malware is delivered by email. Now, when we say malware or malicious software, there's a whole plethora of uh, examples that we can uh, mention. No? But let me just uh, focus on three examples. The first one is malware that can spy on you. So kung nakatanggap ko po kayo ng email na may attachment and without doing any due diligence, you clicked on that attachment, then your machine may suddenly find itself running some form of spyware. No? The spyware can capture your data, your, your keystrokes. No? So when you type your username, your password, when you chat with your friends, your family, all of those keystrokes are sent to some remote location. The spyware can also see what you can see on your monitor. The spyware can silently turn on your camera, no? Without turning on the LED that indicates that your camera is on. The spyware can turn on your uh, microphone, okay? The spyware can actually uh, take copies of your important files and send it elsewhere. So that's the first type of malware that usually come through comes through email attachments, no? The second type, uh, is the command and control malware. So this type of malware, when it infects your machine, it actually allows the attacker to remote control your system. Okay? So parang hindi na po kayo ang may-ari ng inyong makina kung hindi yung attacker na. And there are two ways of controlling. No? The first one is uh, very obvious. Nakikita nyo gumagalong mag-isa yung mouse. No? But any self-respecting attacker won't do that. They will control your machine without you knowing it. Okay? The third type is what we call ransomware. And this actually encrypts your data so that you no longer have access to it. Okay? So he no hostage nila yung data mo. Now imagine if your organization has all of your data on one computer and then it was encrypted by ransomware. So anong mangyayari? Wala ka ng access sa data. Okay? 
and you have to pay in order to have your data decrypted. So all of these uh, thing, all of these uh, scary things, no, go through the attack vector uh, email, no. Sa email po dumadaan itong ganitong klasing attack sa atin. Now, attacks via email rose by 220% in 2020. Meron po kaming secure email service na ang pangalan ay Cartero. It's the code name, no? Cartero. And we are monitoring data. No? We've been monitoring data for several years now. So alam na po namin yung uh, statistics no? ng uh, attacks, ng spam. We know what months spam will become very high. We know when the quiet months no? for spam are. It's, it's very uh, interesting to note that during the lockdown last year, attacks via email rose by 220%. So we correlated that with the, with the, with the duration of the lockdown, spe specifically in the Philippines. Ayun po, no? Nagmatch siya. Because so many people lost their regular income, they were now forced to turn to cybercrime. No? And uh, one of the easiest ways to join the cybercrime bandwagon is to try to attack via email. Just send, send the malicious emails, no? And ito pa pa ang nakakatakot, no? One in 13 web requests lead to malware. So it's really very important that people practice secure browsing, no? Huwag punta ng punta kahit saan saan. Do not use your work device for personal browsing and vice versa. Because you may pick up malware somewhere, no? Without knowing it. And then inadvertently uh, infect your entire organization. And the average ransomware payment rose from 33% last year to $111,605, no? So medyo mahal po ang sinisingil pagdating sa ransomware. When these attackers encrypt your entire hard drive, they will ask for your, they will ask you to pay, no? And ang nakakatakot po dyan, meron pang mga, mga ano yan, mga conditions. We will delete a random file every 30 seconds. Okay? Or we will delete 10 files every hour. Or we will leak to the internet 10 photos every 30 minutes until you pay us. So ang dami po sakit sa ulo ng ransomware attack, no? And so a lot of organizations are forced to pay. Okay? And a business will fall attack to a, ransom, a ransomware attempt, no? Every 11 seconds. So makikita nyo nga no, na kung titignan natin yung ating mapa na iniwang kong uh, umaandar, you will see that uh, attacks are really going on 24 by 7. No? Iba na po kasi ngayon, eh, dati po usually ang tinatawag namin na ka-sniper yung mga attackers. No? They will really try to hit specific targets. But now, because bandwidth is very very cheap, no? well for uh, in other countries, and mataas po ang bandwidth na ngayon, uh, a lot of attackers opt to go the shotgun approach. So kung sino ang mahinang tamaan, sino ang pwedeng ma-own nila, no? then they will take it. No? That's why there's an increase in attacks. And roughly 11, every 11 seconds, a ransomware attack happens. No? Now, let's talk about exfiltration. Once the bad actor is able to enter your system, no? primarily nga through email, no? but I'll, I'll be talking about other, other types of... Uh, of attacks na later on. But once they have entered your system, they normally do, what they normally do is exfiltrate, no? Or move data out, copy data away from your system and onto a remote location, no? Now, data breaches exposed 36 billion records in the first half of 2020. That's a lot, no? Napakarami. But wait, there's more. Just this month, no? June 8, if I'm not mistaken, which is the anniversary of Bluepoint, by the way, um, a file containing 8.4 billion passwords was uploaded to the internet. Think about that. 8.4 billion passwords. How many people worldwide are now online? According to the latest survey, 7.85 billion. And therefore, mas marami pa pong yung password na nilik kesa sa total number of people who are currently online. No? And that's because there are multiple accounts. No? Some people have multiple accounts or most people have multiple accounts. So this uh, archive, this password file is called RockQ 2021. And RockQ is actually released every year. So definitely it gets bigger and bigger every year. Okay? 
And so we caution people, no? we, we, we actually recommend to them the change your password this month just in case your password is already there, okay? Next, very, very scary. Personal data was involved in 58% of breaches in 2020. More than half no, of these 36 billion records which were breached involved personal data. And that's really very scary because personal data can uniquely identify a person. It doesn't have to be a name. It can be several data points that will identify that person. No? And 30% of data breaches involve internal actors. When we say internal actors, these are people who are part of the organization, which was breached. No? Now, there are two types of internal actors. The first one are unwitting internal actors. Hindi nila alam na nagkukos na sila ng data breach. So these are people who, who usually click on attachments, no? download attachments without checking, click on links without checking, visit websites which are of dubious uh, origin or character. Uh, what else? They download the uh, pirate, pirated software, no? and so on and so forth. Hindi po nila sinasadya, but they cause data breach. The smaller part or the smaller portion of internal actors, these are what we call uh, uh, agents. No? Sila yung mga sadya silang nag exfiltrate ng data. So, nagnanakaw po sila, diretsahan na, nagnanakaw po sila ng data mula sa isang organisasyon at binibenta nila ito. Later on, we will discuss why they do this. No? Now, 45% of breaches featured hacking. I would like I'd like to define hacking no? just to simplify. When I say hacking, ito na lang po yung isang active attempt at gaining entry from outside. 17% involved malware. Uh, we discussed, uh, discussed this during infiltration. No? Sending data para sunduin po mula sa loob yung vulnerability o yung malware. No? And 22% involved phishing. When we say phishing, it's actually someone pretending to come from a legitimate organization convincing you to give up no, or provide your personal information, among others. No? Very, very loose lang pong mga definitions ito. Now, the average cost of a data breach last year was 3.86 million. The large part of this 3.86 million dollars uh, was in payment for ransomware. No? Marami po talagang nagbayad ng ransomware last year. And another huge portion of this 3.86 million dollars were paid in fines, no? Marami pong iba't ibang batas na meron pong ka ka karampatang fine para sa iba't ibang infractions when it comes to data breaches, no? We will talk about that later. And this is very important, the healthcare industry incurs the highest average data breach, breach cost at 7.13 million. Healthcare po, no? Tuloy natin. More than 93% of healthcare organizations experienced a data breach in the past in the past uh, three years, and confirmed data breaches uh, in the healthcare industry, uh, as we can see here, no. Ano yan? Talagang healthcare ang focus natin, ang focus ng mga kalaban, no. And what? Bakit? Bakit ganon? Okay. Healthcare is actually the third most saleable item in the dark web. Malaki po. For example, let's compare, no? If I were to sell a an email password, no, of someone on the dark web, I might fetch $100 for it. But if I were to sell health information of a person, no, one person, then people are willing to pay up to $100,000 for that particular information. So malaki po talaga kaya talagang gustong-gusto nila gold mine ang healthcare information. Now, this is also very important to note that the remote work has increased the average cost of data breach by uh, a lot, no? And the remote workers have caused a security breach in 20% of organizations who turn to remote working or work from home. Bakit, no? Alam naman natin to, pero let's just, uh, let's just say it outright, no? The home is not protected like the, the workplace, okay? There are some homes that are well protected, there are some homes that are more protected than the workplace, but in general, your workplace is more protected, usually using enterprise uh, technology, compared to the home. No? And so attackers took advantage of this. Kung ako po ay isang attacker, I will case the target organization if I find that that 
target organization has premium security, I will now look for people working from home within that organization and simply attack them. It will be easier, it will be less costly, it will take me less time. Okay? And so we have to be very careful as remote workers, we have to be very mindful no, of our security. And as Sam and uh, Titus mentioned, they're actually planning sessions also for how to secure your home. So stand by, no? Lagi po kayong mag, uh, mag-subscribe sa channel na ito. Okay? Now, let's talk about opportunities, no? Let's not just focus on the negative, but let's talk about opportunities. Number one, the worldwide information security market is forecast to reach 170.4 billion next year. So companies, organizations are willing to spend for security. Naka-budget, no? So sa mga budget nila next year, they say, we will spend on security. And that's a good new. That's good news for cybersecurity professionals, no? Next, the demand for data protection officers has skyrocketed and risen over 700%. Pinag-uusapan po kang ina ito, no? Nung nag-start yung program natin, di ba? There's always a place for data protection officers, no? Sobrang dami pong need para sa DPO. And there was a 350% growth in open cybersecurity positions from 2013 to 2021. Alam nyo po, ang isang ekspertong totoo, okay? a true cybersecurity expert will always have a job. A legitimate cybersecurity professional has 0% unemployment rate. And they actually earn anywhere from 2,870 US dollars per month. No? That's about 100, uh, 138,000 pesos. Up to 17,917 uh, $17, dollars per month or around 865,000 pesos. No? And since cybersecurity is here, here to stay, it's I think safe to say that these amounts will increase year after year until we are able to fill the need. No? Sobrang laki po kasi ng demand. Speaking of demand, there are 4 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs globally. So ganun po talaga karami ang pangangailangan ng cybersecurity. You know what? No? Um, most of the people I talk with regarding cybersecurity, they have the same complaint. And girls, we're, we're having having a hard time filling positions simply because people who proclaim to be cybersecurity experts, when we test them, we find, find out they are not. They are not real experts. No? So, hindi nakakaintindi ng protocol man lang. No? They don't understand uh, basic foundations of computing. So, it, all of these... Uh, Self-proclaimed experts actually add to the problem, no? to the shortage of uh, cybersecurity professionals. No? So, hopefully, nabigyan ko kayo ng idea kung ano yung nangyayari ngayon ano, sa, sa ating global, ano, this is the global landscape for cybersecurity. Okay? Now, let's connect this with the privacy, no? data privacy. According to uh, Larry Ponemon, who's the chairman of the Ponemon Institute for Privacy and Data Protection, a data breach is about both privacy and security. And security is very important because you can't have privacy unless you have good security. And so I salute no, the organizers of this show for actually making cybersecurity a foundation. Pag wala po ito, may hirapan po tayo sa privacy. Okay? If, you have, if you do not put a premium on security, then there will be costs later on. Let me talk about that. If you do not have good, acceptable cybersecurity, then you will have economic costs. No? There can be theft of intellectual property and corporate information, no? mga proprietary information ng organization. Nyo. And you will have to look at the cost or deal with the cost of recovering data and repairing damaged systems. There's also reputational costs. No? Consumers can lose their trust once they found out that you experience breaches. There's a potential loss of current and the potential customers no, to other competitors who have a better reputation as far as data protection, data privacy, and cybersecurity are concerned. And there's negative media publicity no, from traditional and online media. 
So sabi nga nila, no, it takes 20 years to build a reputation, one cybersecurity incident to lose it. Okay? And there are regulatory costs. There are fines and penalties and sanctions imposed by various data privacy and cybersecurity laws and regulations. Uh, I listed some of the laws which are and regulations which are being practiced worldwide, no? But I'd like to focus on our local Data Protection Act, no? Ano po ang mga costs pagdating diyan? Okay? So, pinag-usapan natin 'to kanina sa umpisa ng program. I created a table here so that everyone can be aware of what the infractions will cost, no? Organizations if they do not practice data protection, okay? So if you look closely at this table, you will see that uh, infractions against general privacy principles, principles of transparency, legitimate purpose, and proportionality, or failure to comply with conditions for consent, or violation of data subject rights, will actually be meted out with a fine of 1% uh, to 5% of the annual gross income of the past year. Gross po ito, ha? So, there are some organizations, no? Which actually closed because of this. Hindi na kinaya. No? So, yung tanong po ni Sam kanginang tanong pilosopo na, paano kung lugi? Oh, wag na po natin isama yun, ano? But the point is this. 1% to 5% of your annual gross income is a very large amount, okay? The same goes for failure to imp implement appropriate measures to protect uh, the security of personal information, no? And third parties, no? So it is actually an organization's duty to inform the third party providers about the DPA, okay? And failure to report a breach within the required time, okay? So some people try to conceal the breach, Hindi nila na-report agad-agad. Okay. 0.5% to 3% of the annual gross income. No? One of the best practices that you can do as an organization is to actually compel your third-party providers to be DPA compliant no? before you deal with them again. Pwede po yan. Ano? Napakagandang best practice yan. Marami pong magagaling na DPOs na gumagawa niyan. Karamihan po ng mga DPO na binabanggit ko ay members po ng NADPAP. Failure to register is 50,000 to 100,000. Failure to comply with any commission order okay, is 50,000, not exceeding 50,000 plus other applicable fees. Ito na po ang nakakatakot. No? There's also criminal penalty. Unauthorized processing, 1 to 6 years imprisonment. No? Acts due to negligence, 1 to 6 uh, years imprisonment. Plus anywhere from 500,000 to 4 million pesos. Okay? Improper disposal of information. Tinapon lang sa labas, may nakapulot, 1 to 6 years imprisonment or a fine from 100,000 to 1 million. Unauthorized purposes, yung sinasabi ni uh, Lito kangina no, na iba yung paalam na paggamit pero ginamit pala sa ibang bagay. Okay? 1.5 to 7 years imprisonment and 500,000 to 2 million. Okay? Intentional breach, these are for the internal actors who sell data to, to gain a profit. No? Uh... 1 to 3 years imprisonment and a fine from 500 to 2 million. Now, this is very important. The next one is the concealment of data breach. Naku, sobrang dami pong organization na nagko-conceal ng data breach. Ayaw nilang malaman ng iba. Okay? Well, guess what? If the NPC finds out, then you will face 1.5 to 5 years imprisonment and a fine of 500,000 to 1 million. Wag na pong i-conceal. Let's report so that we can we can take action, no? Then there's malicious disclosure, which uh, merits the same, unauthorized disclosure, and a combination of acts. No? So, ano po ito? Add-on. No? Pwede tayong mamulubi dahil lamang hindi tayo nag-practice ng proper data privacy and cybersecurity hygiene sa ating mga organizations. Okay? Now, what will it take to protect yourself your data and your organization from attacks, no? Anong gagamitin natin? Alam nyo po, sobrang lawak ng cybersecurity. And that's why I'm really, really very glad that this organization is sponsoring weekly uh, shows, no? Regarding data privacy, data protection, and cybersecurity. 
sobrang dami po eh no but let me just uh, focus on the fundamentals no since cybersecurity 101 pa lang naman po tayo i will focus on the fundamentals and hopefully the succeeding speakers will build on this no all of these fundamentals first you protect yourself through education i cannot overemphasize this education is the key okay data privacy data protection information security and cyber security cannot be dealt with by feelings they have to be dealt with by data you should have to be educated okay so sinasabi ko lagi no every time i'm asked to talk to speak about cyber security education is the key okay next anticipation learn how to anticipate what the attackers will do because it's not a question of if but when you will be attacked next is detection okay be prepared to detect once you have anticipated the various attack vectors the various possible entry points be prepared to detect any form of intrusion any form of unauthorized access and reaction have a proper incident response plan map out the steps that you will take on how you will react okay actually i i i, I prefer the word respond no because reaction is uh, usually associated with something knee jerk but response is actually something more positive. No? So reaction or response, uh, those are the terms that we can use. No? How do you respond to the attack? How do you respond to the breach? Okay. And then resilience. No? Whether or not you are attacked, make sure that your organization, your assets, your people are all resilient. Okay. And this is easier said than done. Okay. But taking these five pillars you can actually start your first step towards uh, cybersecurity culture. No? So this is actually a circle and it actually goes round and round. You do not stop with resilience. You educate yourself again. Okay. There's this uh, trivia no? that says tech or IT improves every eight seconds and therefore you need to educate yourself over and over again to anticipate new threats now which we call zero day threats to develop detection systems for these uh, unknown threats now to develop uh, the proper response and ensure the resilience of organi your organization against cybersecurity attacks and data breaches okay so let's click, keep this in mind, no? Education, anticipation, detection, reaction, and resilience. You will be hearing more about this, no? From our succeeding speakers uh, in the future. So stay tuned again, no? To this channel. Okay. Now, let's talk about the, the landscape when it comes to the war, no? Yung, ano ba yung battleground natin? Kangina, tinignan natin yung... Uh, the lay of the land no in terms of, a glo uh, of the global uh, situation now let's look at the battleground okay the battleground is what we call the web okay some uh, some people call the web the internet it doesn't matter but if it is a very vast ocean which uh, is actually for the most part hidden to most people no the surface web is actually 4% of everything and usually people stay in the surface web no tayo po Anything that you can Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo, anything that you can search using your search, favorite search engine, they are part of the surface web. And this is actually a battleground in terms of cybersecurity. No? So this will include websites, no, your corporate site, okay? your landing pages, anything that can be seen on the internet without requiring any form of login or authentication. So that's one battleground. The next battleground is what we call the deep web. The deep web makes up 90% of the web. It, is, uh, it has many definitions, no? but let me just simplify this. The deep web is where you cannot go if you are not a member of it. No? Therefore, you need authorization and authentication. Kailangan pong may login tayo. Example, you need to log into your Gmail account in order to access your email. 
So technically, Gmail is part of the deep web. You need to log in to Facebook before you can see the timelines of your friends. No? So technically, Facebook is also part of the deep web. Okay? Medical records, for example, of hospitals which are accessible online by authorized people, it's part of the deep web. Military records, criminal records, police records, which, which are, can be accessed through the mobile phones of authorized people, they're part of the deep web. Okay? It's also a battleground when it comes to cybersecurity. Nandiyan po ang data ng organization nyo. Nandiyan ang data nyo. Okay? And so people, attackers are actually trying to hit the deep web also of your organization. And finally, we have the dark web. This is another place where you cannot go to without, but this time without using special equipment. No? So kumbaga sa, ano, sa drawing natin, pwede kang gumamit ng bangka sa surface web, pero kailangan mo ng submarine sa dark web. No? So you may access the surface web using a boat, but you need a submarine to access the dark web. In this case, your boat is your browser, Chrome, Firefox, Brave, Opera, edge no but in order to access the dark web your submarine is a browser called tor browser or something similar no tor stands for the onion router there are other browsers but if you'd like to get your feet wet you can install tor browser to access the dark web no this is another attack area okay so what do you do in order for you to be proactive no Remember, you educate, you anticipate, okay? What do you do? You perform vulnerability assessment and penetration testing and stress testing, okay? Plus security information and event management on your surface web and deep web assets. Uunahan po natin yung attacker, no? If you are not testing, if you are not attacking your assets, someone else will or someone else is already doing so. So uunahan po natin sila, we will be very proactive. No? And again, I'm laying out things that will be discussed in the future. No? We're looking forward to topics about VAPT or vulnerability assessment uh, and penetration testing and stress testing. No? Stress testing is very important. Your assets, no? let's say your website, can, can be very, very secure. But it can only handle 100 users simultaneously. That's not good, no? So you have to factor in stress testing hanggang saan kaya ng aking site kapag mayroong malaking attack o may malaking volume ng legitimate users na dumating. Okay? And of course, security information and event management for your deep web assets. So you know what's happening to your data, what's happening to your uh, asset, what the users are doing while they are, while, while they are logged into your system. Okay? Very, very important. And you need threat intelligence about the dark web and from the dark web. No? Let me share this with you. I will not uh, mention which organization, uh, but it was there during my introduction. Ano? We actually have an artificial intelligence deployed in, in the dark web. No? It has been there for uh, several years such that people in the dark web consider that artificial intelligence as a person. No? So humihingi sila ng intelligence sa kanya, binibigyan siya ng bagong intelligence tungkol sa mga bagong threats, mga bagong binibenta. No? And it's a very useful piece of uh, information gathering technology. We're able to find out things from the dark web before they hit the other parts of the web. No? So again, be very, very, very proactive. No? And I'm looking forward to a threat intelligence discussion also in the future. Okay? Now, if you are proactive, what are you expecting your adversaries to do? Let's now flip the coin. Okay? What will your attackers do? There are several ways of discussing this. Let me begin with the classic approach. No? The classic approach has five steps. No? Reconnaissance, scanning, gaining access, maintaining access, and covering tracks. But I want to use the more enriched model which has seven steps, no? and that's reconnaissance, scanning, and enumeration, and gaining access. This is usually done on the surface web battleground. Okay? Once they are able to enter, they will now try to go for lateral movement, no? 
So from one system to another within your network, for example, privilege escalation. Nakuha nila yung access ng inyong secretary. They will now try to use that access to escalate their privilege to the president's. No? So from secretary to president access. Then maintaining access, this will inclu include the putting back doors no? so they can uh, come in and out. No? Alam nyo po, ang dami kong uh, na-audit na system na kung saan, labas-pasok po ang kalaban. Primary reason, they have better equipment. No? Secondary reason, the, the target organization did not put too much, did not respect cybersecurity data protection too much. No? So ganun po yung problema. Okay? And then of course, covering tracks to make sure that you don't know that they are still there or that they took something or that they, they were able to compromise your system. The mature attackers will never flaunt that they attacked your system. There's more in, in it for them to have access to your, to your system for a long period of time. No? Long term po ang iniisip ng mature na attacker. Okay? Ano pa po ang pwedeng mangyari? Let's talk about malware. Malware actually follows the same seven-step procedure, no? reconnaissance of the target. Weaponization, for example, pag nalaman ko pong mahilig kayo sa uh, mga animated GIF ng, let's say, uh, anime, no? Then I will get a very popular anime, okay? And then I will now weaponize that graphic. Lalagyan ko na po ng malware. And then delivery, I will email that to you. Check this out, okay? There's a new episode of this anime. Okay? So, may iba-ibang paborito tayong anime, no? Pero, and then excited ka, clinic mo. There, the, div, the, li, the delivery happened and therefore, nakapasok na siya sa iyong system. Then, exploitation starts, no? Exploitation is when that simple piece of software now looks for other technologies within your system to use in order to uh, expand its capabilities, no? Then, it will install itself. Take command and control and finally action and objective. Ano po ba yung objective ng attacker? I-wipe out ba ang hard drive? I-encrypt ang data? mag ng data? Okay? I-on ang camera? I-record ang iyong mga ginagawa? And so on and so forth. These are the things that we should prepare for. No? And I hope that by laying this out to you now, you will have an idea of how to narrow down ano, on what you need to learn about no? in terms of cybersecurity. Okay? Now, Uh, patapos na po tayo. Sam uh, requested me to give you some examples of attacks. No? So, how people think they get hacked? Nakita nyo na siguro itong meme na ito no? sa Facebook. No? How people think they get hacked? They normally imagine hackers wearing hoodies, no? typing on their computers all day, typing code, typing on the terminal. Well, true. There are attackers like this. But how they really get attacked is by providing personal information, no? Nakakita na ba kayo ng ganito sa internet, sa Facebook, sa social media? Meron pong post, no? Name a song that takes you back to your high school or college days. Oh, gusto ko yan, no? Type ko, no? And then the hacker already places you, your generation. Anong generation kaya ito? Ah, may, may idea na ako based on the song. Kailan sumikat itong kanta na to? When did this song become the soundtrack of a generation's life? Okay? Enter your birthday to find out who your guardian angel is. Wow! So I enter my, 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 the day I was born, the month I was born, and the year I was born. Oh, si uh, Michael Archangel pala ang guardian angel ko. Okay? How very comforting to know. Well, nakuha niya yung iyong date of birth, no? And then your hero name is your middle name in the name of your pet, no? Or first pet. Uh, nakakatuwa, misan may picture pa ng hero, but they already got information which can be used to reset your other online accounts, no? The same with your warrior name. It's the place where you were born in and your favorite team, specifically favorite sports team, no? You remember this, di ba? If you try to uh, reset your Gmail password, one possible question is, what's your favorite sports team? Okay? So people actually get hacked, not because of uh, hackers having exceptional prowess, no? But because of how easy it is for people to give up information. Okay? So that's one aspect. Let me go to another example. 
Let me share with you a copy of an email which I received last June 8. No? Puro June 8 pala yung examples ko. Anniversary po kasi ng Bluepoint. <laughs> last June 8, I received uh, an email from philpostcares at philpost.gov.ph. It's telling me, or it, it, it's telling me that I need to pay 14 pesos in order to have my package released. Now, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Whenever I uh, I receive shipments, no, mostly of uh, of optical media containing software, I usually pay 14 pesos. And so in my mind's eye, this is legitimate, no? But luckily for me, my email client also tells me that the mailer is Microsoft Outlook. Now, I have nothing against Microsoft Outlook, but 96 to 98% of attacks use Microsoft Outlook. Simply because it's very easy to change the variables, no, yung from, okay? Kaya marami pong gumagamit ng Microsoft Outlook. So that's one red flag. Okay? Kung galing sa Microsoft Outlook, no, if the email comes from Microsoft Outlook and you do not know who sent it, do not trust that email immediately. Okay? Next, my client also tells me that the email really came from the server 496751-CW. 91774.tmweb.ru with an IP address of 94.228.114.101. Galing daw po sa Russia. Oh, definitely, this does not, did not come from Philpost, no? And finally, the, the, the client tells me that Philpost cares at philpost.gov.ph originated from a third-party server. Okay? So there, there are red flags in this email. Finally, if you look at the footer, there's a history of the Philippine postal system spanning over 250 years, starting from 1967 okay, until the time of President uh, Duterte. Now, usually emails with this stuffed with factual information, they are suspect also because attackers actually like to fool your spam filter or your whatever you use, no? Kami po ginagamit namin machine learning tries to fool the filter into accepting the email as legitimate. So be very, very careful. No? Now, let's look at the call to action. The call to action is click here or clicking here. What happens when you click here? Let's look at two possibilities. No? The first one is you may be led to a website, tracking.philpost.gov.ph, where you are asked to enter your tracking number, your email address, first name, middle name, and last name. Let's look closely at this site, okay? First, let's look at the address bar. The address bar tells us that we are, we, we are, we are on the tracking.philpost.gov.ph site, no? But look closely at the letter O between the letter G and V of .gov. There are two dots on top of that letter O, okay? It's a Unicode character, which is now allowed in domain names, Therefore, this is actually a spoof domain. This is not philpost.gov.ph, but rather philpost.gov.ph using the Unicode letter O, which actually has two dots on top. No? So, ano po yan? Legitimate domain po yan, pero hindi siya legitimate philpost.gov.ph domain. No? Now, may, most people will miss those two dots because our brains will autocorrect what we read. Okay, We call that typoglycemia. It's a word play on hypoglycemia, no? So typoglycemia actually autocorrects what you see such that, for example, gov.ph is read by your brain as gov.ph with the correct O. Had I not uh, focus your attention to it, you might probably have missed it, no? But of course, there are eagle-eyed viewers here who immediately saw that, those two, two, two dots, no? Okay. Next, aside from the tracking number, it's asking for your email address, first name, middle name, and last name. Very, very dangerous information, ano? That you do not give away to anyone you do not trust, okay? Now, let's look at the legitimate site. There. Look closely at the difference between the legitimate site and the spoof site earlier. First, the legitimate site has the proper letter O for gov.ph, okay? And it's only asking for the tracking number or tracking numbers not any other information, most especially not personal information, okay? Let's go through this one more time. Spoof site, legitimate site. Spoof site, legitimate site, okay? So we have to be very careful when we browse the internet, when we open links that we do not trust, no? 
Now, let's look at the second possibility. Ano pa ang pwedeng mangyari pag nag-click ako ng email, ng link sa email na hindi ko pinagkakatiwalaan? Here we go. Okay? When you click on that link, a malware may now infect your system and in encrypt all of your data. No? So it, it says here, warning, your personal files, files are encrypted. No? And then there's a countdown. And it's instructing you to visit the dark web okay, in order to pay in cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Monero so that they can give you the key to decrypt your data. And they are telling you that after the timer expires, your key will be eliminated and you will no longer have access to your data. Okay? It gets worse. Remember what I told you earlier? It gets worse. They may also delete random data, uh, let's say every 5 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, depending on the time they gave you. Or worse, they can leak data out onto the surface web, no, public internet, every 5 minutes. So it gives you an added incentive to pony up, to pay. no, And it's not cheap. Okay, The latest uh, ransomware... Uh, that we dealt with, uh, they were asking for 118,000 pesos to decrypt the data. No? Now, the problem is this. Some companies do not have that much money and so they just lose their data. Some companies do not, they refuse to pay because they have backups. But the problem is the backup is not current. No, Two months old na yung backup. So they can only restore two months worth of data. They have to re reconstruct or gather again the two months data that they did not back up. Back. So backup is a very important uh, aspect. No? Have a backup policy, guys, no? for this one. Now, before I move on to the last example, let me just, uh, last two examples, let me just mention this no? very quickly. Only 8% of people or organizations who pay so that their files will be decrypted, only 8% get 100% of their files back. Okay? 65% get partial files only and this is not the the fault of the attacker no they just did not pay in time they waited no and so the the malware deleted files or leaked files and they were not able to access a hundred percent anymore eight percent no so it adds it, it really adds to the sense of urgency yung pinag-uusapan natin kangina, kangina no, ng mga host natin the timer and the deletion of files or the leaking of data adds a sense of urgency. So you pay up no? when it comes to ransomware. And this is all because someone clicked on a link without checking first. Okay? Let's continue. Let me now talk about a physical attack. When we case an organization, when we walk around an organization, okay, when we perform a physical assessment, one thing we'd like, we, 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 we'd like to do is to leave USB thumb drives and the uh, cables no? lying around for someone to pick up. Okay? So normally, ang iiwanan, na, ang iiwanan dyan, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, no? to make it really attractive for people to pick up. What we hope is that these people will insert those drives that they found onto their work machines. Okay? And once they do so, bingo! No? will be able to hack into the machine, will be able to clone the machine, will be able to control the machine, will be able to wipe out the data on their machine, and so on and so forth. The same happens, it's the same case no, for the cables. Normally, people leave their cables lying around and just look for them when, in, when they need to recharge their phones or they need to transfer data. So what we normally do is we leave cables lying around or we replace cables no, which are unattended with special cables that have special hardware inside. And once the target plugs in the device, no, let's have this uh, scenario, no? the target uses these rogue cables to, to charge their phone on their laptops. Bingo! We have access to their phone and to their laptop. Two in one. Okay? And we can do really bad things no, to those devices. But we normally prefer to control the de devices, no? Uh, putting backdoor so we can connect anytime as long as there's inter internet access or we can exfiltrate no or steal data. Depende po sa trabaho. It depends on the job. Okay? So that's an example of a physical attack. 
Now, let me wrap up with this example, final example, before I turn you back over to our hosts. Let's talk about our phones. They have become an integral part of our lives. Daladala natin kahit saan, ano? Minsan nga nahuhulog na dahil nakakatulog tayo. Nahuhulugan tayo sa muka. Uh, there's also this shower curtain. I, I, I really enjoy telling this story, you know. There's this shower curtain that you can buy online which has a transparent pocket, waterproof. So you put your phone there so that you can continue your Facebook and other social media stuff, no, while showering. So the pay uh, the, the, the the mobile phones are actually really integral, no, parts of our lives. Part of our lives. So what else do we use our phones for? Well, we use them for personal uh, browsing. We use them at work, no? So sometimes we take photos of our documents on our phones, no? In the healthcare industry, usually nurses will take photos of the charts, no? Of their patients and so on and so forth, no? Of course, you also use them for entertainment, like listening to music, no? Who doesn't like uh, a good music while, while working, no? So, and you normally do that using your Bluetooth devices, no? Uh, usually kasi hindi magandang may, ka may cable, no? You can't move around freely while, while, while working. So that's fine, no? You listen to Spotify, you enjoy the music while working, you tune out the world around you. When you're done, you turn off your device. Okay? But your Bluetooth, uh, the Bluetooth on your phone is left on. Why? Because most people would rather have convenience rather than security. So in the balance of convenience versus security, okay? Mas gusto nila convenience. They want to listen to music as soon as their phone, headphones or earphones pair with their phone. And so they leave on their Bluetooth devices running. No? Now, let me share this with you. I have here okay, some files. No? I have here 12 files which are actually source codes for a program. If I compile this into a program, into an application, I can build an app that can actually hack into your Bluetooth connection, into your Bluetooth device. This is very important. This special application can take over another Bluetooth device without any authentication or pairing request. It bypasses any form of authentication. And so once this device, which is in range, no, takes over your device, then it can now clone your device, no? Usually the target will be your your uh, your gallery, okay? Or your documents, or your browsers, and so on and so forth. They can clone your device, they can implant backdoors, or they can control your device so that it appears that you are using the device, but it's actually them, no? So for example, your device has been authorized in your work to access a certain database. Then the attacker can use your device, which is authorized, to access the database. And you are none the wiser. And then, bam! Lumabas na yung breach, no? Nalaman na ng lahat. When they look at the logs, it's you. You were the one who accessed that file last, or that record last. Delicado. Sobrang delicado, no? Let me just also mention that the application can control any type of Bluetooth device. We have successfully experimented with this. Ginamit po namin ito sa scooter. Okay? So yung scooter po na electric scooter, meron siyang Bluetooth that connects to your uh, smartwatch so that you can you can uh, see the speed of your uh, of your uh, scooter. You can plot your course, no? Saan kayo nag-travel and so on and so forth. If you leave that Bluetooth on and unpaired and we use this app, we can actually cause the, the, the scooter to increase in speed or suddenly suddenly break no so this is not uh, this is not a story no proof of concept meron po nagamit na po no and so this is really really very scary okay and so those are different types of attacks that may happen to you social media you know email physical attacks or attacks using range devices marami pa pong iba and i'm really really very happy that this group is uh, planning to have more no more topics about cybersecurity. Okay? Now, let me just close with this. As the world is increasing, increasingly interconnected, everyone shares the responsibility of securing cyberspace. Lahat po tayo. Okay? I would like to liken this to the COVID-19 pandemic. No? 
if everyone follows the COVID-19 protocols with the intention of protecting okay protecting the group or the 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 the, the majority and one person refuses to do so that single person may end up compromising the entire flock or the entire group no and so let's keep this in mind the world is indeed increasingly interconnected okay and everything is getting connected day by day and so everyone has the burden you know everyone shares the responsibility of securing cyberspace and we hope that what what this group is doing is actually contributing to that no? by sharing information teaching people more about cybersecurity and so i pray that i have helped uh, narrow down no cybersecurity hope that other people build upon the concepts i discussed and I, I hope that i've shown you the lay of the land no in terms of our cyber war so thank you very much i now turn you back over to our uh, hosts Yep, thank you. Thank you, Brother Engels. Maraming salamat. Ano, ang dami namin natutunan dyan. Ako, kahit na baka hindi ako pumasapag may exam tayo dito, di ba? So, yan. Balik natin. Teka, wala pa si Mr. Vito. Yeah, Galing, Engels. My God. Mm -hmm. Yan na, yan na. Yan na si, ano, si uh, Lito. Natuwa ka pa sa inaanak mo. Ha? <laughs> <laughs> oh, talagang manong manong sa iyo. Tulit si Engels. Oh, eh. oh parang, di ba, parang, in info overload. Ah, talaga. Kaya <laughs> tanggalin na natin ni Engels ah. Oh. Oy, take, alam niyo habang oh. nagsasalita si Bro Engels, pataas ang pataas yung audience natin ah. At ipakita natin kami ng mga comments ano. So, ang alam mo, number one fan ni ano ni Bro Engels nandito. Pati naman natin si Smaggy Antonio nandiyan. Ayun, so kinukubos na si Smaggy <laughs> yung kanya ngayon. Ano, Ayun si Rosana Cruz from Yaba. Magandang gabi po. Salamat po at ah, nagstay kayo ano. And then, ito pa si Rose. Ayan, okay. Raji, thank you, ah. Nilabas ko yung email nyo. Ayan. Tapos may comment din uh, from our, ano, from Jean Tawandong of our, ano, our friends sa ITMS uh, PSMU. Ayan, kinukubos na ka. Titus, Engels, ayan, meron na raw bagong, ano, uh, hindi, hindi na mag-Netflix si, ano, si, si Ma'am Jane, ano. So, ayan, namimiss, namimiss ka na namin, Titus. Bumalik ka na kasi, Nagsilbi ka na uli sa PNP. Ito talaga, oh. Titus. <laughs> Oo. Yan si Abit. Maraming salamat po. We're coming back, oh. Grace. Yes, we are, we are. Oh, marami pa dito. Kaso po, hindi nakasabay yung ano eh. Hindi na, lumalabas yung pangalan nila. You have to, ano po, authorize StreamYard para po lumabas yung pangalan nyo. So, otherwise, ganito po yung lalabas nyo. But again, whoever you are po, salamat at nanood kayo, no? So, talagang, uh, alam mo, Engels, uh, nag-practice muna kami apat na beses bago ka namin ginest. <laughs> Di ba, Abit? Wow. Oh. Ay, dry kami. Oo, oh, 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 apat na beses yun. Ayan. Uh, so, sa panglimang beses, na, nakakunit kasi dito. Ito, Sharon Alcantara, magandang hapon din or good evening. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Etra, oh. uh, kasi dapat iniimbita nyo rin mga kamag-anak nyo dito, abit kay talaga. So, ito, si Dennis Espiritu, <laughs> number one fan mo din to, si Dennis. Sabi niya, si Engels lang malakas. At totoo po yan. Talagang napakalakas ni, ano, ni Engels, di ba? Kaya nga po, pinaghandaan niya talaga to. Uh, isang buwan na po niyang pinaghandaan tong talk na to. Wow. Uh, ito, meron Mabon po tayo sa si... Uh, ang ganda ng pangano, Yasmin Perez Jinko. Yan, magandang gabi din. Ano? So, kanina pa siya nagbari. Pasensya na kayo, ngayon lang namin pinapakita. Kasi nga, uh, napasarap yung kwentuhan namin lima kanina. Eh. Tapos ito po si Daryl Joe Mundin Balesteros. Yan. Daryl, magandang gabi. Uh, sana po panoorin niyo po ito pa ulit-ulit no, para tumaas po yung aming views. <laughs> May replay <laughs> naman po eh. So, and send it po, send. Si, si Denny, sinay. bro, hinahanap ka niya. No? Baka may kinansin kang meeting ha? kaya para maka-attend ka dito. Ha? Uh, sir Dennis, thank you for allowing ano, Sir Engels, di ba? And of course, si, yan, si, si Smaggy, may hina, ayan, may hina nang binabati doon sa chat, no? si Attorney uh, Larry Fontanilla. Magandang gabi din po, Attorney Larry. And then, of course, ito po si Pompsi Castillo Adamos, okay? Sana po dalawin niyo rin kami dito kahit wala na si Engel sa aming guest list. Pero mukha pong kailangan maging permanent po siya dito kasi ngayon lang kami umabot ng 40 plus sa live dito sa channel na ito, ah. So, mga kailangan talaga. And again, ito yung unang post of the day galing sa may bahay po ng ating speaker ngayon, okay? Si Smadi Antonio, the hardworking. Uh, ala, titos, ah... Uh, Abet sa kalito, alam nyo ba na yung Blue Point Foundation ang laki ng tulong sa NADPAP? Alam mo ba na apat yes, na taon yes. na kami 
inaampon ang technology infrastructure ng NADPAP. Libre ang email namin, unlimited. Kaya panayang ano ko, download ko na kung ano-ano. <laughs> At yan again, maraming salamat. Kaya ako may yun, Sam. <laughs> maraming salamat sa Bluepoint Foundation sa inyong tulong. Ano. Every year po, sila po ang talagang ano, uh, empowerment uh, partner for technology innovation ang uh, NADPAP. Pro bono po yan, abono pa. Thank you po. Okay, quoting po. Maraming salamat. Oh. Okay. So, uh, ayan, may kayong tatlo, ayan, si Titus, tayong dalawa lang hindi cybersecurity, ano dito eh, oh, guru dito eh. Eh. Oh, Since ubo, data privacy kayo, automatic cybersecurity na rin kayo. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Implement ang data so, privacy. Yeah. <laughs> Dapat siguro, oh. ubulis tayo dito, tapos mag-geek-talk lang silang tatlo, no? para, di ba? <laughs> Oo, oh, para... <laughs> Palingin ko, parang the talking in German, akala natin English yun, no? pero oh, talagang no. heavy. Hey, hey. hmm. O sino gusto uh, mo na? Oh, Lito, uh, Abet, kayo nga. I mean, anything to add? So... Comments please, comments please oh. from the two tools. Uh, that practically covers a lot of space, definitely, like what Lito said. Uh, pero, you know, cybersecurity or InfoSec for that matter, is is so broad no because it's 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 the only it field that co- that you know cuts across everything eh? uh, application uh network internet uh so there there's really a lot of things in it no so um i i'm sure Eccles would agree no kulang pa yung oras na binigay niya for 101 <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, ang 101 mo is one semester eh. Kaya nga 101, di ba? 101, 102, 201, 202. Dapat apat na semester siya. Eh. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I have to tip my hat off to uh, Engels here uh, because for, for such a very limited amount of time, he covered a lot of ground. But, you know, if it's talagang 101, you want to learn the basics, it's gonna take more than that. Di ba, Sir Titus? May program ka nga for security eh. Of course, they're coming soon. Abangan po niyo yan. Karugtong ng binanggit ni Engels at meron po yung dalawang nasa baba. Yan, sila po ang ang magiging ano, prime time. Malapit po yan. Abangan niyo po. Ang bakbaka yes, ng yes. cyber security. <laughs> Support lang po ako ni Sir Lito. Ni uh, Godfather, <laughs> support ka lang. So, so <laughs> Godfather ni Lito, inaanak si Engels. Oh, name yun ni Lito, Godfather. Abet, ano ka? Kung Godfather nga si Lito. Pamangkin. 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 Don Vito. Don Vito Averia, di ba? So, Lito, yun ang bagong pangalan mo. Don Vito ka na. Okay? <laughs> Baka kumalat sa PNP yan, bro, ha? Oo. Oh, Ganun. 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 <laughs> Oh, may bago na namang greeting. Oh. Good afternoon po si Pamsay Kaminoy. Tama sana po, tama yung pag-ano ko. No? So, yan. Oh, Wait, may, oh. may blue point pa. So, pagkwento, uh, Engels, you spoke about ano, no? uh, blue point naman. Ikwento mo naman sa amin kung ano ginagawa ni blue point. 22 years. Ano? So, ang ganda ka ng logo eh. 2020, 21, 22. Diba? Yun yung ano. So, kwento mo naman. Anong, ano ba ginagawa ng blue point foundation? Yan. Yeah, bro. Uh, thank you. Ano yan? Um, we started in 1999 when people did not even know how to pronounce Linux yet. And they, we were actually called, ano eh, alam na alala ko pa, no? <laughs> yeah, oo. Naalala ko pa, someone said, ano, uh, parang ginamit yung term na si Raulo. <laughs> si Raulo ba kayo? <laughs> Why are you trying to promote this toy? Sabi nila. It was a toy operating system inside the lunchbox. Yan ang tingin nila, no? But guess what? Uh, now, Linux is 30 years old. And it powers almost everything now, from our watches and phones to our, to to the to the helicopter we sent to Mars, no. And so Bluepoint has actually been uh, been uh, training people in Linux and open source for the past twenty two years, no. So we're very glad that the, our students are now working in the industry, no. They're lead, leading uh, they're, they're leaders, no, in the different various industries worldwide, and they have begun to contribute also to Linux and open source. So the ecosystem is really, really very, very much alive. And so thank you so much sa, sa ano, <laughs> kung nandito kayo, lahat ng mga students, no? And uh, I forgot, shout out pala ako sa mga PNP tsaka uh, Philippine Army friends natin. No? Kumusta kayong lahat? So yun, Brother Sam, iniksihan ko na lang para... Okay, ano, ito, ito, ito. Meron din isang mahabol si, ano, I get si Brother John James, no? Sa Son of Thunder, Hinobe. 
kay the resistance trader Linux, Gilbert open source blockchain system included. Yeah, marapit tayong sumalang yan. Meron tayong nilulutong, uh, you know, show din kay uh, Brother John James. Ano? Magandang gabi. Happy Privacy Fridays, no? Di pa natin narinilog si Godfather, ano eh, Vito Adria. <laughs> <laughs> Nagkaroon ka pa rin na bago sign. pangalan. Oh, Vito, Don Vito. Ayan. Bumalik pa yung kabataan mo dito. May si Vito, 1960s pa lang yata. Nag-hack na yan eh, di ba? Yung mga punch, <laughs> yung mga punch cards, no? <laughs> oh, don't... Nilalakihan niya yung butas. <laughs> oh, denial of service, nilalakihan niya yung butas. Oo naman. Oo, oh, yung po mga hindi nakakaalam <laughs> po ng punch card. <laughs> ano pa sasabi mo, Titus? <laughs> so, para ako nakaparoon ng Netflix tonight. Hindi siya. Yeah. Yeah. Hindi siya roon. Diba? One, thing that, one thing that I actually admire about the program is oh, ang focus talaga ni ni ano, ni Angus is education is the first line of defense. Yun mm. talaga ang dapat take away doon because if you don't yes. educate the people, you're oh. dead. Tama tama. Oh, Titus may maganda tayong news sa ating mga manonood, ano? Uh, after actually pwede nilang sila makakuha ng digital badge sa Cybersecurity 101 through Nadpa Academy. So, ipopost po natin dito sa show yung link doon sa exam. Gagawin pong, huwag mo naman masyadong hirapan, ano? uh, Sir Engels, yung exam nito, ano? para makakuha ng digital badge. Libre po siya sa mga NADPAP members, saka sa mga PH Cert volunteer, saka po sa Select Bounce Back uh, Network uh, members. Kung gusto niyo pong subukan ng inyong galing sa inyong natutunan sa presentation ni uh, Sir Engels, hintayin niyo po yun. Meron po tayo exclusive digital badge for Cybersecurity 101 na ating ila-launch. Okay? And sana... Uh, yung PCS, uh, acknowledge din siya, di ba? Parang, parang siya CPD, no, di ba? Oo, oh, right, Pwede, right. No? Well, uh, mag, oh. mag, medyo magpo-promo ko sa dalawang mamang nasa ano, kasama yeah, natin yan. Na. Pero po kami, <laughs> InfoSex, uh, InfoSex yan. certification, coming up soon. Inaayos na po namin siya. Because yun lang, ang goal namin is to duplicate the number of people na certified sa InfoSex. Di ba? Yan yeah, no? no? ang goal uh, talaga dyan. Uh, uh, yep. Very important Correct. siya. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything, you know? Information yeah, security, ah. Yeah. Oh, mm, InfoSec, ha? Oh. Hindi yung iniisip ni Abel. <laughs> <laughs> Paano ba nalaman sa? Ang galing mo talaga. Galing mo, galing <laughs> ang galing nyo talaga. Ang galing nyo na kakakuha ng doon. Kaya ka biyernes natin ginawa itong show na to. Ano diba? Para wala na tayong problema, <laughs> no? Oo, kaya yun. Wala namang MTRCB rating to, no? Hindi, <laughs> ano siya. Uh, kaya nga, Friday siya, eh, di ba? So kaya after, oh, saka after office siya, eh, no? Pero ah, si, yes, ano, si, si Don Vito pa na yung pasay. Eh. Walang sinabi. Pinasa kay Titus eh, di ba? Talaga, uh, oh, Don Vito, Don Vito Abria. <laughs> Gusto mo ba magturo ng, si, si Lito level 400 na to eh, di ba? 400 na siya eh. <laughs> Masyado lang ma-overexpose si Lito, kaya ano lang, eh. Timplado ang sinasabi eh. Yung, nung, nung nag-umpisa ako. Uh, Ayan. Dito lang siya natapos. Oh, nung nag-umpisa no, no, ako actually sa IT, <laughs> hmm. sabi nga ni Abit nung last Friday, no? nung last Friday, yung hacking was actually a positive term. Yes, so, that's true. Tulad ng halimbawa, yung unang, isa sa unang makina na ginamit ko nun, it user online system. No? <laughs> Tinignan ko yung OS, madoble nga ito, ginawa kong 16 users. Yun yung hacking. Because mm. you're trying to improve on a system. Mm. The more negative term is actually cracking. Correct. Mm -hmm. no? mm. mm. Yes, yes. Mm. Mm. Kasi ito na matan mo si Angela, uh, Angelina Jolie and Sandra Bullock kaya naging <laughs> negative yung hacking. <laughs> uh, mainstream. Uh, eh. Naging mainstream. Uh, At saka talaga, hindi, saka talaga nung araw, kasi nga short, halimbawa, Rapid disk, 160 KB. Pinobol <laughs> kasi finance yung kabilang side hmm. para naging reversible siya. May side panahon A, nun B. na yung disket <laughs> Ayan, kasi, yung rapid disk. Sinimulan mo kasi. One-sided <laughs> lang. <laughs> o, epa. O, side to side. Pag, pag, yan, o, pagka, o, <laughs> pag tinanggalan mo ng ano, di ba, balik taran. <laughs> Yan, inabutan ko na yan. At marami pa akong istorya dyan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sabi ko. Brother Sam, Brother Sam. Oh. Bro Sam, uh, shout yes. out lang pala muna. Si General Baracero, Sir Barry. 
Ay, si Barry, magandang gabi po. Oo, magandang gabi po. Oo, sana po magandang gabi po. Yes, galing po sa dati pong head ng CPSM, Center for Police Strategy Management. Yeah, yan, yan. Sir Barry, good evening. Good evening, sir. Nice to see you here, sir. Happy Privacy Fridays po. Yung mayroon na comment kanina, I guess yun, James. Yung kalahati na show natin, fight back cybersecurity. Sinabi ni Titus kanina, no? Seems really that to educate yourself is the best way to fight back. Di ba? Tama? Tama? Yes, against crackers. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Crackers pala yan. Kaya join us here every Friday, no? Marami pa pong kwentong gaganda si ano si uh, again, the Godfather of Cybersecurity Lito Abdiya. Yan so yung yung po si... kalibutan. Si... <laughs> ignorance, <laughs> ignorance talaga yung number one na kaaway natin yan. Yes. Oo. Oh, oh. Correct. Tapos si correct. Uh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> saka si Uncle ano, si Uncle Abet po. Yan. Kwento niya naman PH shirt. Oo. Ano ba yung PH shirt? Di ba? Kasi baka yung mga first time nakapakanood. Uh, ano ba yan? Nags- nagsa-certify ba kayo ng ano? Ng mga sakwan? Di ba? PH shirt. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Yan. Uh, teka, chichikin ko. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. We started really on a non-formal basis. No? Just a bunch of information security professionals. At that time, the government really needed some help in legislation. <laughs> policies, uh, walang representative na mapadala. So, you know, sabi namin dito, okay, sure. So, so why not? So, we've been investing a lot of uh, effort and time, uh, pro bono, of course, for the service of country, until pagtagal-tagal, toilets, mga parang 20 years plus plus na pala tayo nagbibigay ng libreng tulong. <laughs> so, mar- marami na po kami napadpad lahat ng department, Supreme Court, ITEC, yung, yung dalawang batas natin, yung anti-cybercrime and DPA, nang galing po yan proudly do sa subcommittee namin sa ITEC about uh, two decades ago, kailan lang na pass. But you know, it's it's fulfilling uh, and you know, we're, that's why, you know, you never heard about <laughs> PH cert, eh, no? Kundi, kundi sa mga ganitong show. Because we, we really work more in the background helping the government and other entities that seek, seek our assistance, either technical or policy-wise. Uh, and, and honestly, you know, we've, you know, we've had several uh, attempts and efforts or offers to grow it bigger. Uh, somehow, somewhere... Uh, I, I don't know why why we still re- retain that small number of volunteers. Sir Tonites, your your, <laughs> your input. Our uh, President Emeritus, Sir, Sir Tonites. <laughs> Para ang tingin kasi ng public yan, exclusive club. Ayan. Ay, hindi naman po. Hindi naman po. Oh, uh, because ano, uh, you have to have brains to be able to be there. And also, you might have <laughs> Desire to be able to help the public. Well, ne, tell you one anecdote. Paano kami naging official na PH cert? <laughs> Kau kasi sa me. Oh, oh imagine yung mga oh, Philippine Computer Emergency Response Team. Yung po yung meaning na PH cert, no? Uh, com- yeah. Pero may dash yung PH dash cert. Oh, diba? so, isang ano? anecdote. Paano oh. kami naging national cert at one time? Ma- matatanda ko yun, David. May papeles yun, hindi eh. ko na makita eh. <laughs> oh. Ayan yung buo. Yeah, yun yung buong pangalan. So, back in, two- uh, yeah, back in 2004, no, sa isang uh, ministerial meetings, diba? na sa telecom, oh, may, sa telecom, sa telecommunications ministers meeting in the, hmm. ano, uh, dito sa SIAN. Okay. Tinanong ko, oh, meron na ba kayong cert? Sabi, bawat ng bansa represented. Sabi, yes, we do. Ganyan. Eh si Berpeña noon, mm. head siya ng CICP noon. Sabi, oh, meron kami, PH cert. Yun, biglang naging national cert si PH cert. No. <laughs> Hindi na kami alam yun, basta bigla na lang kami pinangalanan. Uh, uh, I'm still with, ano, I'm, I'm still active with the uh, legislative work, no? Uh, marami maraming ICT related ano IC related bills may mm. ipinasa ang second reading recently mm. yung open mm. data uh, uh, ano yung transmission act mm. okay and then marami pang tinatrabaho in front yung uh, internet transactions act pinatrabaho niya in relation to e-commerce 
So marami pang tinatrabaho. Si pag ni Ninong ni Nito, no? Ngayon, pro bono lahat dito yan. sa lahat ng bills na ito sa Congress, both houses, is adopting minimum information security standards. Ano ba itong minimum na ito? Halimbawa, uh, pinaka-basic, yung pinag-tawag natin na ano eh, uh, identity and access management. Diba? So isa yan. Tapos yung data protection. <laughs> so data protection. So yun, yun, yun. Oh, data protection, data at rest, at saka data in transit. Pwede natin i-discuss lahat yan in our next episodes. Ano yeah, ba no? yung mga bills in Congress? Uh, uh, may, 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 taon na, at tulad ano, habit, oh. gano'n katagal yung Cybercrime Prevention Act natin ay tinutulak nun. <laughs> Di ba siya ng labing dalawang taon bago na isasabi. Wow! Uh, tapos yung rules so, on electronic yung mga ginagawa namin sa free search. So if oh, you want to... Uh, yung Supreme Court to, like yung rules on electronic uh, evidence, ilang word. taon yun? Uh, Sumali kayo sa PH Cert. Excited. Uh, yan o. Mag-email kayo sa ano, info at pshcert.cc. Oh, ano ba meaning ng .cc na yan? Ah. Coordinating Center. Yun! 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 Hindi na kasi na-explain ko nga last, last time. Uh, uh, hindi naman kami yung cert na, your, your norm, normal run-of-the-mill cert na pag may problema, tatawakin nyo, nandiyan na kami. No? We're, we're more of coordinating efforts oh, and yeah. encouraging institutions, uh, verticals, uh, kasama rin kami uh, doon. Segments. Yung, na magkaroon kayo ng sarili yung cert. Yun yung, yun yung goal, actually. Uh, oh. Email niyo po, ah, kung gusto niyo magkaroon ng local cert, uh, for example. So, halimbawa, oh, sa center. Malabon, Malabon cert. Ganun, pwede ba yun? Di ba? <laughs> pwede. pwede. Oh, so, pwede din sa... Mala cert. <laughs> Libasawa cert. Oh? Yan. Uh, <laughs> puting bato cert, yan. Yung pede pede ano? Eh, oh, tayo sa ano sa Boracay. Boracay cert <laughs> yan, Boracay. Oh, Sige, lipat ta tayo doon, no? Oy. Alam niyo malapit na tayong magdalawang oras. So, again, final words from you gentlemen before we close this really very educational Wait, you know, episode. Actually, oh, ano? Hindi. Yeah. Yeah, pwede natin pwede, pwede natin pag-usapan yan. Merong oh, merong Tilito, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you. <coughs> may, medyo may lag si Ninong Tolight, sir. Oh. Uh, di ba, again, yung mga kaibigan natin sa Telco, uh, tulungan niyo po natin na magkaroon ng ano, fixed uh, fiber line ang ating kaibigan, godfather of cybersecurity. Otherwise, baka oh. i-crack her nila. Kaya, oh, baka di ba? <laughs> Ayun din. Ibago tayong word, oh, oh, di ba? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Ang dami po pwede i-share sa akin. Baka naman. Yan, oh. Oh, <laughs> hinong dito, kaya yan. Oh. Oh, oh. Willing pong, ano, magbayad yan for 300 Mbps na fiber, si Ninong Lito. Opo, opo. Ang <laughs> dami siya kasi pinapanood na hindi niya napapanood, di ba? Kaya yan. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, final words please before we close the you know, the night. Okay? Siguro unahin natin ang pinakabata. Di ba? At ang ating uh, speaker si you know, sa, uh, Sir Engels. Thank you very much uh, Sir Engels. Any last words for our uh, you know friends at Deep Bound Talk Network, Nod Poppy Church and our uh, you know Blue Point Foundation colleagues. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for inviting us, no? Talagang this is an honor to be part of this uh, show. And uh, let me just uh, close siguro yung with a uh, Parang ano, parang call no, or appeal. No? Uh, lagi kong sinasabi tuwing may, may talk sa cybersecurity. Again, tama si Titus. No? Education talaga ang number one. But this is actually what I'd like uh, us to to keep in mind this weekend. No? Alam nyo, the challenge is not just about cybersecurity. It's about growing a generation of readers. No? Naging sobrang baba na po ang reading, reading comprehension ng mga tao. Kaya napakadali rin pong magkaroon ng mga issues. Lalo lalo sa cybersecurity and privacy. So let's build the next generation also while equipping ourselves now. Let's grow a new generation or the next generation generation of readers para maging mas bright yung future natin in terms of data privacy and cybersecurity. Importante, importante talaga yan. So thank you po ulit sa lahat ng nanood and uh, thank you sa host natin. Thank you sa organizers. No? Very, very uh, pleased to be here. Thank you so much. Babalik po si, ano, si Bro Engel sa atin sa mga susunod na kabanata ng cybersecurity. Okay? Sir Abit. 
uh, inaanak ni uh, Ninong Nito. <laughs> Pamangkinis. Uh, actually, the, the honor is uh, on the other end, no, Sir Engels. Thank you for gracing us with the, your very informative presentation. I personally like the graphics. <laughs> Talagang pinagpagura ng graphics, halatang-halata. Hindi siya stand, standard of the, uh, standard of the uh, uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, and, and your explanations were very clear. Maraming salamat. But we really need more of that. No? Uh, like, like I said, no, and like what you know, Brother Engels here said, uh, there's really a lot to learn. No? If, if you're, you're moving from one field to infosec security, major challenging. Even if you're moving from an IT field to yes. tech security, mahirap pa rin talaga. No? Uh, so reading talaga. Reading is uh, the number one tama siya doon. No? Um, well, you know, it doesn't matter how you read, whether it's on the tablet, <laughs> digital, or katulad namin na we still love the smell of paper. Uh, mas gusto namin minumuklan yung papel. <laughs> At may uh, it doesn't matter but as long as you as you read and uh, understand no tama si Sir Engels eh. yung, yung ignorance yung pinaka kalaban natin dito because the, the less we know the more susceptible we are so this is one one of our ways in spreading the awareness of infosec and privacy uh non pop uh PH cert and of course yung um, the other organizations PCS, of course, and uh, bounce back uh, in our own little way, no? in our own little way. Uh, and hopefully, uh, taking the cue from Sir Engels, we'll, we'll have more of these, uh, in which also, you know, Titus is doing, if you really, there's a course that talagang back to basics from, from 101 to 202, medyo matagal, pero didetalyahin lahat. Uh, yun po yung pagkakataon. No? If you if you if you're like us, mahirap magbasa, dalawang page pa lang inaantok na kami. <laughs> baka sa lecture, baka sa lecture, masundan nyo, and my presentation uh, uh, would be better. But again, learning is key. Thank you very much, Pop. Sir Angus, thank you. Thank you, Abet. Titus Manuel, please. Okay, uh, marami salamat kay Angus. As always, uh, napakabanda, napakaganda ng build-up ng, ng session mo today because para ako, para ako nanonood ng pelikula until the climax. Talaga naman. Okay. You're alive from end to end. So, yeah, importante siya. One good advice we can actually give to the people who's watching right now, if you're planning something for uh, InfoSec, remember, huwag naman napakalit ng uh, location sa training. Sa Mantana, yes. pagkailan <laughs> namin percentage, ang laki ng gap. Meron, meron dysfunctional some place eh. 70% ang cost tao, tapos ang training yung percent mo, 10%. Nasaan naman yan? You're going to all, always have that problem. So, again, guys, more people, importante tao a people is the issue. The people also is the one that will correct it. Mila po, uh, Dr. Sam, it's back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Tito Sunuel. Salamat din, no? uh, bro Engels, uh, Abet. Oh, may gusto kong gawin eh. Subukan natin yung pag, pag bolt in daw dito sa ano. Hindi ko magawa eh. Matagal yung, yan, yeah, ganun. No? Walk in. <laughs> Ang hirap. Eh, oh. Sa upper na. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Subukan mga Tito Engels, yan. Dito, yeah. dito sa kabila. Yan. Yeah. Nakamirror eh yun, no? Let's... Yeah! Yes, konti pa, konti pa, konti pa. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Muli po, ito po, nasa Privacy Fridays po tayo, saka sa Fight Back Cyber Security, ang main message po ngayong gabi sa ating mga kaibigan ng mga MSME, sa mga Data Protection Officers, tuloy-tuloy lang po ang ating pag-aaral. Kasi po, doon tayo makakalaban ng patas. Ano? Mag-aral gabi-gabi. But huwag kalimutang magdasal. Buli po, ito si Sam Jacoba. Kasama ko po, Titus Manuel, Abit de la Cruz, Engel Saton, at of course, si Don Vito. Or Don Vito. Ang ating ano, Ninong Vito Averia, the godfather of cybersecurity. Walang, salamat sa lahat po. See you next week. Ano, hopefully, Data Ethics 101 naman ang ating topic next week. So, yan. Tingnan po natin. Magandang gabi po sa BBN, mga ka-bounce back, saka kanad pop. Thank you very much. God bless everyone. See you. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Happy weekend.